I've kind of just been upset because I feel like we aren't putting enough um, energy into developing alternative and renewable energy sources, and we're still focusing too much on fossil fuels. Um, but in the course that I took, the energy crisis, I quickly learned that there are multiple dimensions to the problem, and it's not so simple as to just implement the technology because there are other costs involved. We learned that the current economic downturn has negatively affected a lot of the research and development that goes into um, renewable energy and alternative energy. And without cost competitive technology, companies will not be willing to pay for renewable energy sources. Um, they'll stick to the cheaper fossil fuels. In addition, there's a conflict of reducing greenhouse gas emissions from fossil fuels without harming the, um, the economy. So while we aren't going using renewable or alternative energy sources, at the same time, we aren't reducing um, our greenhouse gas emissions. And many corporations are fighting against pollution restrictions, arguing that it will be costly to their production. So it kind of leaves you hopeless. How can we make any progress in reducing our dependence on fossil fuels and their negative impacts on the environment if no one is willing to change? Um, and we, I focused on the, our inability to finance alternative renewable energy products maybe should lead us to um, find ways to mitigate um, carbon dioxide emissions that are be re being released from human fossil fuel consumption. So in the course, we first looked at our current fossil fuel consumption. And as you can tell from the graph, the United States consumes, well, their energy is consumed by 86% fossil fuels. And of all the fossil fuels we consume, we are most dependent on oil, which is the middle section right there. But this is definitely going to be a very big issue up and coming because, as you can see, we are reaching a point of peak oil. And peak oil is basically where our production and discovery of oil is, has reached its peak and we are no longer going to be discovering many new sources. But at the same time, we are consuming just as much or if not even more with developing countries such as China um, turning over to fossil fuels and industrialization. So with um, the scarcity of oil, we are going to see an increase in the price of oil. And that's going to be very detrimental to the United States just because we are a net importer of oil. And um, that means that we are dependent on for more dependent on foreign countries to get our oil. And um, if they charge us more, um, our economy will be harmed. So um, our class kind of looked at alternative fossil fuels that we can use instead of oil. And it turns out that coal is very abundant in our country. But the problem with coal is that it's one of the biggest polluters. It emits the most carbon dioxide of all of the fossil fuels. So if we turn our reliance towards coal instead of oil, we will be harming the environment even more, contributing even more to temperature change. So that's not really a solution. Um, and there's um, science that proves that there's a direct correlation between carbon dioxide and temperature change, as you can see from the first graph on the left. Um, so, continuing to input carbon dioxide into the atmosphere will be detrimental to biodiversity, farming, agriculture, people in coastal communities, because um, sea ice will melt and um, their lands will be completely flooded. Um, it will al also increase the occurrence and intensity of natural disasters, and it will have many other negative effects. So we really need to act on the issue, and we cannot keep on um, consuming fossil fuels the way that we have been. Um, but if people aren't willing to sacrifice some of our energy demand, we need to find other ways to reduce the, our consumption's impact on the environment. So we looked at um, alternative energy, especially nuclear. And a lot of people in my class thought that nuclear is a very good solution to the energy crisis. They think it's clean because, well, it, doesn't, it uses very little uranium to produce a large amount of energy compared to oil, coal, and natural gas. It also produces no greenhouse gas emissions, so no carbon dioxide will be let into the atmosphere. And the fuel can be reprocessed and recycled. But the costs are very high as well. Um, uranium is not, an infinite, is not an infinite supply, so there are predictions that in about 85 years we would run out of uranium sources. Also, there are um, safety concerns. And although the probability of a nuclear meltdown is very low, we look at um, situations such as Fukushima or Three Mile Island, and immediately the public is just very discouraging of building any more nuclear power plants. And with that comes the issue of who is willing to put a nuclear power plant in their backyard. Um, so where are we going to find places to build these? Um, next we looked at 
renewable energy. And as it turns out, solar energy is actually the most, the costliest of all um, energy sources. And this is partially due to the cost of transporting solar panels. They're very bulky and heavy, and the materials do not last that long. They last about 20 years, and then after that, it's very hard to recycle them. That's a big issue, and we definitely need to focus um, more research and development into developing better solar panel materials. And actually, an interesting thing was um, my professor Stephen Bradforth and a group are doing research on um, using organic light emitting diodes. Um, instead of emitting light, they're going to try to capture light and then transform that into electricity. And this material is very thin and flexible, so they think that they can put it on walls and windows, um, and it will. Um, and if we can put those on all the houses, then we could put a significant dent in our um, energy needs. And um, we also looked at the space that solar farms would need to take up. And they take up a lot of space, so it's very hard to find a place where you can put um, a solar farm that will actually have enough um, or generate enough power to power enough homes. And wind farms are pretty much the same with the space requirement. I don't know if any of you have ever seen LADWP's wind farm, but it requires a very vast expanse of land. And no one's really willing to live near a wind farm just because they're very noisy and unsightly. So um, there's an issue of where do you put the wind farms as well. Um, so my, for our final project, we were kind of asked, you know, what do you think is a viable solution to this, this whole energy crisis? And I kind of, and just listening to like the reactions of my class, it just seems that there's very little hope that we are going to, re in recent times, transform, transform our energy to alternative or renewable energy sources. So instead, I, figured, I thought that maybe we should just be concentrating on, if we're going to continue using fossil fuels, how can we reduce the um, emissions coming from those fossil fuels? And one technique that I thought was very interesting, still needs a lot of research and development, um, was carbon capture and storage. And by using carbon capture and storage, we could keep 80 to 90% of the carbon dioxide from entering the atmosphere coming from coal plants. And um, the IPCC um, says that this can mitigate 10 to 55% of carbon dioxide emissions by 2100. So it would definitely have a very um, big dent on our carbon dioxide emissions. And carbon in capture, capture and storage t typically uses a pipeline to transport carbon dioxide from the power plant into the deep ocean or geological formations. And it's usually dissolved in a saline solution. Um, but sending the carbon to the ocean actually has isn't a form of long-term storage, and um, the carbon dioxide will eventually enter the atmosphere again. And it would also have detrimental effects to ocean life. But storing the carbon in geological formations is safe because the sediment acts as a cap on the carbon dioxide, and the rocks provide long-term carbon storage. Um, and actually, petroleum companies are using this technique of um, sending carbon dioxide into the ground to force oil um, back up to the surface. So I think that um, one of the promising sources of funding for this project could be from actual petroleum companies, because they could actually use um, carbon capture to um, get more oil, and then that would offset some of the costs of capturing the carbon. Um, but there are some downfalls, like plants must be located in an area safe for carbon storage, and if improperly sealed, the carbon um, could possibly leak back into the atmosphere or into groundwater. So I don't think that carbon capture and storage should be used as a long-term solution to our energy crisis, but it could certainly serve as a way for us to buy time to research and develop alternative and renewable energy sources. Um, and I kind of wanted to open up the question to you. Um, you know, what is the fate of, our, of the energy crisis? Do you think that we have to continue using or our dependence on fossil fuels until we can develop better um, renewable and alternative energy technology? Or do you think that companies should maybe front the costs um, for the sake of like, the future of our environment?